Thank well, you for staying with us. Uh, we now have um, a former Minister of Education and co-founder of the Bring Back Our Girls movement. And who she is the presidential candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria. And she's contesting in February 2019. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Obi Ezekwesili. Good morning. Hello, Alero. Good to see you. We were hoping you'll make it before we finish that segment. And you came in just when we were ending it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to have you here. Thank you very much. How was it like going through the traffic? My goodness. Um, I discovered all kinds of hamlets around the, the Lagos in Bado Expressway. Um, I was at the um, at Congress, the Redeemed Christian Church of God Congress. Um, <laughs> And um, the Holy Ghost service finished early hours of this morning. Just hardly went into the, uh, the uh, accommodation to get ourselves packed. And we set out for your program. That would be about 4 that five, Around 4.30. And, and you're just getting We here. just got here. And you know you're not far from the redeemed car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not far from it. The, when you went, you say you discovered some hamlets along yes. the road. Yes. The, when you went through those, what did you see? I saw poverty. I saw poverty. You know, On so two close, legs, as they say. So close to the economic. So, I mean, just think of it this way, because you, we have to constantly connect the dots. This is the, the that, this road is the economic artery of the country. So there are many things that are going together here. The poor state of the infrastructure, the poor management, you know, traffic management system, uh, the challenges of um, uh, categorization of road users on this kind of a stretch of road, uh, the policy on um, the weight of 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 usage mm -hmm. that happens on the road, the maintenance issues. So the entire thing we normally call it road governance challenges. So you look at your road governance strategy, and there is an issue there. And for this this road particularly has a resonance for me because this was a road when I was at the World Bank that we actually had. Um, it was a $400 million uh, uh, loan to enable this road to be constructed. It ended, the up in the, it ended up in some, you know, the government actually mm. did not. We had to move that money uh, toward some of it towards supporting F the Federal Road Safety Corps. That's how come you saw that change program that the Federal Road Safety Corps did. The government did not carry on with this, the, the, that particular government, not this government, you know, did not carry on with the, the it was a very elaborate program of infrastructure mm -hmm. and, and uh, institutions building. Because when, when you look at other countries where road infrastructure works, there's a whole governance and institution that underpins it. But one, one wonders, because when you talk about the road thing, let, maybe we should begin from there. We used the Ministry of Works has a maintenance department. We have the Federal, Ra Federal Roads Management Agency, which is supposed to be like the managers of the roads. But is it that they're not aware of their responsibility or nobody's looking down and saying, okay, no, I think they are, or is it too they centralized? Part, their part is important. Their part is important. And frankly speaking, there's so much to be said of the failure of the road maintenance agency. In, you know, I mean, like, what does it take to even ensure that the bush that grows around al along the, the a highway that is the, this is the most economic road of the country, right? And so there has to be, it has to be said for us that somebody is actually paying attention to it steadily. steadily. But there is much more to, to the issue other than the maintenance. It's the fact that the infrastructure has all but collapsed. And, and I know that this particular administration is, you know, patching up certain segments of it, you know. But there has to be a complete rethink of the road strategy in our country. We can't, you know, I mean, like, when you look at the budget of the country, 
it, it's going to be impossible for us to to solve the problem, this major problem of roads, mm. just the, the highways and then the, uh, the, all the trunk roads and, and then the, the rural feeder roads. Okay. Because look at what the Chinese say. The Chinese say if you want to get people out of poverty, give them roads. They understood it. The roads link your people to the market and improve their productivity and their competitiveness. Okay, Dr. Kusiri, the constitution talks about road construction, leave it in the hands of the local government. Not all roads. Not all roads. I uh, mean, the major roads that it's are It's one of the things in our, uh, in our um, what do you call this, this concurrent list in, yeah. the, in the Constitution. Okay. So the Constitution talks about that. Local governments build roads, build feeder roads, build um, markets, all the small economies mm -hmm. in the localities, local government. But Nigeria is blessed with quite an, some land. In, enough land to build roads. Mm. But then we also have waterway. Mm. And we also have enough land to build rail. Mm -hmm. So you're vying for the office of the president. What's your plan as regards the transportation network? It has to be, you know, we have to think of it as logistics. That's the way, you, you have to think of it as a system. That's the way that countries that have solved it, you know, have, have had to be on the other side of the, of the desk having together with my team of experts, having to advise, say, the president of a country on how to look at this whole thing of system around logistics. It's about what do you do with, to connect your economic corridors and your social corridors and networks in a way that maximizes the productivity of your citizens and their businesses. So, so when you think of it that way, then it means that you've got to have a comprehensive approach to it. So the, what you said about the waterways, about the rail, about uh, aviation, about you know, road roads. transportation, mm. and then the different categories of the roads. And you, know, you have to think of it from the perspective of what is the role that the government can play that would incentivize private sector engagement in this process, because roads, you, you know, you look at it, uh, even in countries uh, like uh, India and uh, China that we look at, they, they understand that there is a private component to road construction, that the budget of the government alone cannot do it, it can't cut it. So they, they fix the, the, the policy framework for massive development of road, and then the, uh, the waterways and then the aviation sector, you know, we are part of a real challenge, part of what has crippled us is that we have been so confused in terms of the roles of, you know, the, the very important philosophical understanding of how a complement of government, of business, and of the consumers and the citizens solve every economic problem that you have in society. Mm -hmm. And my theory is that, that because our political class love control, they have been unable to clinically make that separation. Because the more that they can control things that have to do with economy, the more the opportunities for rent seeking and corruption. Mm -hmm. And so not wanting to let go of those opportunities, the, the side of the mind that shifts toward problem solving, that private capital does want to solve a number of the development problems that we have. But no, let's not let them in. Because if we let them in, then we have to let go of the powers that we wield mm. in those sectors. So you take something like the petroleum sector, and you know that the challenge we're dealing with is that you know, every president wants to go and be not just the president of the country, but the president of NMPC and Ministry of uh, Petroleum. Mm. You know, so, so, so the sector suffers on the desk of politics. And that's why, you know, for me, um, I think that we should be fed up with um, having the kind of political landscape where problems that could easily be solved are not being solved because the political incentive to solve them is too low. Okay. Now, um, let's look at the other aspects of your Rescue Nigeria manifesto. What are you offering Nigerians? 
Well, I think that the key thing that uh, distinguishes my offer to Nigerians is that I am the candidate who is saying that we, we need immediately to lift 80, at least 80 million of our citizens out of poverty. That's a large number. It is a large number, but 